Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Hello to everybody that's on Zoom. I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you over there. Um, and good morning, I guess, afternoon now to the rest of you. Thank you for letting me uh, come in for this. Uh, I really appreciate the contribution that you make to our party and how hard I know you all work to turn out voters every single election, odd years, off years, everything. Uh, and we need it now more than ever. I, I would bet that we all agree in here that we are at a time of uh, pretty much unrivaled danger for our democracy, uh, which I know is, is was hard for me to accept. I really thought that with all the hard work we all did a couple of years ago to get Trump out, that maybe the air would sort of go out of the balloon a little bit on their side. But if anything, it's been the opposite. It, you know, I was there on January 6th, and what I felt like I saw that day was um, the true depth of the commitment that these people on the other side have to come back into power and really rule our country from a minority position, no matter what. They've shown us how far they're willing to go and how much they're willing to lie and cover up what happened that day. Um, and when you think about what our response to that has to be, it has to just be a, a fierce determination to work harder than ever before on all of these elections, up and down the ballot. Uh, and I know it's, it's like a chicken and egg thing where we're trying to use the same tools of the democracy that they're attacking to, to win and be successful and, and outcompete them over time. But that's who we have to be because that's, that's what we all believe in. And ultimately, I think each of us in here probably believes and understands that a majority of people are with us. They are with us in respecting the institutions of this government and wanting them to continue and not wanting it um, to fall into the hands of people who don't believe in democracy itself. But we all know we're in a very, very crowded media environment where a lot of people aren't thinking about January 6th or the democracy in general terms every day. Uh, and so this campaign is going to be a very challenging one, especially this one for the United States Senate. It is going to be the top race in the entire country. I expect it will be the most expensive uh, and maybe probably one of the hardest fought Senate races of all time. There's no presidential race to take up attention. The Senate is 50-50 and on everyone's list of the top pickup state is Pennsylvania. Um, so I think it's important for you that you have a candidate that you know is going to thrive under that very bright spot. Uh, and what I can offer you is the experience of, of someone who's been through something like that. before. Um, as you all know, uh, you've seen it on TV. Many of you have come out to my district even and helped me in this campaign, which we are eternally grateful for. Um, we've had a very, very tough fight in the last four years. Uh, we've won all those races through hard work. I've gone to Washington and voted multiple times for the Voting Rights Act, the Women's Health Protection Act to put Roe v. Wade into law, raising the minimum wage, everything in Build Back Better, the PRO Act for unions, bills on climate change, bills on health care, bills on prescription drugs, uh, defending Social Security and Medicare. Our core priorities as Democrats, I've been able to vote for, defend, and advance while representing districts that are this tough. That's the combination we need to be successful this year. Thank you for everything. I really appreciate it. That way, if you ask me a hard one, I'll just ask myself a different question. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I have a question um, about what's going to happen now. Right? Um, it's terrible um, in Ukraine. And pressure from Pennsylvania to step up its fossil fuel um, extraction activities. Sure. So we really need to lower our fossil fuel extraction. We need to clean up our wells. We need to cap the oil wells, et cetera, et cetera. But there's going to be a real push, yeah. you know, to just get all of it out there and Link. ship it out and you know, all that liquid natural gas, get it over to Germany. So, right. you know, to say, Europe, despite all the problems that there are, how, how do we uh, actually not make it worse? That's a great question. The question is about, you know, the demand for natural gas from Pennsylvania that's going to rise out of the situation in Ukraine and where we're going on climate. I think. We have, to, we have to think short-term and long-term, right? And, and on all these policy issues, we, as important as climate is, we always also have to think, be thinking about economics and security. They're all very intertwined. So I think short-term, actually the most pro-climate decarbonizing thing we could do would be to try to extract natural gas from places like here in Texas and New Mexico and send them to Europe because A, then that natural gas isn't coming from Russia where they're definitely dirtier than we are and how they do it. But B, and this is critically important, if we don't get enough natural gas to Germany and Poland and these other countries, 
they are going to burn coal. That's what they're doing right now. Coal use is on the rise all over Europe, especially in Germany, because they let a lot of their nuclear reactors lapse and now they have no other options. And so in the short term, you know that the least bad option is for these people to be burning LNG, especially from the United States, because it emits half. Now we have to get the methane part right here so that we're not leaking methane all over the place and losing the benefit of the trade-off of coal. But it's important that we do that in the short term. Um, in the long term, I think we all know we need to go from 58 billion tons worldwide of CO2 every year to zero by 2050. And so one of the things that this crisis will hopefully do is inspire all of these countries to double down on their Paris commitments, inspire you know, us to pass Build Back Better, which will be the most important piece of climate legislation in history and will really advance things, not just on solar and wind, but on the grid itself, on hydrogen, on fusion, which is one of my interests on the next generation of nuclear. Um, we really need a diversified portfolio, again, because we never know exactly what situation is going to arise in the world. You know, just one kind of closing thought here. We're very focused on Russia and Ukraine right now. I think everyone knows we're going to be in some low-level form of conflict with China, at least economically, for the next five or ten years. They could deny us access to a lot of the key minerals we need for solar, for electric car batteries, all that sort of thing. Um, but we don't want to lose ground on climate if things like that happen. So that's just why we need a lot of options and we always need to be trying to pick the most decarbonizing one, sometimes of a set of bad options. Go ahead. Hi, a somewhat related question is, what do you think about the break free from plastic pollution now? Um, you know what, can you follow up with me afterward and just sure. make sure I know what that one actually is? Because I we've had a lot of different bills on that okay. topic and I don't um, want to answer it if I don't. Probably no more than I do. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Go ahead. Democrats always do well in the Southwest and Southeast. Key, though, of course, for many people, is the key. Northern tier, center part. How do you feel you can do well in the tea? Yeah, how do I feel I can do well in the tea? Well, first of all, I want to, before I get to the tea, I, I want to make sure sometimes people also don't appreciate how important the Lehigh Valley has become up above um, Philly. But the third and fourth largest cities in Pennsylvania now, number three and four after Philly and Pittsburgh, are Allentown and Reading. And almost all of that is driven by. Uh, Dominican and Puerto Rican immigration into our state. And that exists really all up the Lehigh Valley, but it's an enormous group of voters who should be ours. A lot of them are just making their initial registration commitments in Pennsylvania now, and they're up for grabs. So we've really been targeting them. I can speak Spanish and been making Spanish language commercials and website and everything and really pushing. So that's a group that we don't always think of critically important at both phases. Um, and then in the rest of the T, it's a lot like how I've campaigned in Greene County, Washington County, Westmoreland. They like the fact that I'm a Marine Corps veteran, that I'm young, and most importantly, that I'm willing to go there and do events just like this one, um, but in more difficult areas for a Democrat and take those people's questions and show that they're county members as well. Um, you just got to work. Sometimes you have to find issues that are not so much national issues, but you know, a local veterans issue or a local farming issue or manufacturing or our infrastructure bill is putting things in all these towns all around the state. I can get paid on that as well. We got a time? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all. I really appreciate you having me back. Thank you. I'd love to have you support.